Here we go, y'all. Noonday Nuggets. Proverbs chapter 3. Look forward to seeing some of y'all jump in real quick. If you can, make sure you can share it with family and friends, enemies as well. Uh, we're on day three. Day three. So crossover family and friends, we are diving in this Sunday with a series kicking off the year, January the 7th, called Raw, Real Authentic Wisdom, Real Authentic Wisdom. In the world that we live in, uh, we need to hear some sound advice. There are going to be things that we go through in life to where we need to hear sound advice, get some good insight. And Proverbs is that book of the Bible to where even if you don't have a person that can share uh, insights with you, um, you can go to the book of Proverbs and get this lifelong wisdom that's been dropped in here by King Solomon. And so from Proverbs chapter 1 through 31, we'll be reading one chapter a day uh, all month long. And so y'all feel free to jump in and share with your friends and uh, here on Facebook. Uh, so feel free to share so they can tune in to this wisdom. But we're going to start in on Proverbs chapter 3. Hey, what's up, Fred? Anthony Allen. And... Uh, Man, we're going to get these verses in, drop a few nuggets, let you get to your food, and so that you can enjoy the day. Hey, Sister Beverly, um, but we're going to be in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 1 through 35. I'll, as you know, I'll read three, uh, read the, the chapter, and then we'll just share a couple of nuggets, and hopefully they'll be helpful for you and your family. But Proverbs is that book to where if you're ever looking for life advice— on anything. This is one of the best books to just read through on how to handle the situations of life. So here we are, Proverbs chapter three, noonday nuggets. Uh, Solomon starts off writing the son of David, uh, whose dad, wh whose dad was David and wrote the Psalms. Uh, he's now writing his book, the book of Proverbs. And he starts out Proverbs chapter three, verse one, my son, do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments for length of days and years of life and peace they will add to you. Do not let kindness and truth leave you. Bind them around your neck, write them on the tablet of your heart, so you will find favor and good repute in the sight of God and man. And then here's that real popular two verses. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding and all of your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It will be healing to your body and refreshment to your bones. Honor the Lord with your wealth and from the first of all your produce. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. My son, do not reject the discipline of the Lord or loathe his reproof. For whom the Lord loves, he reproves. Even as a father corrects the son, in whom he delights. Verse 13, how blessed is the man who finds wisdom and the man who gains understanding for her profit is better than the profit of silver and her gain better than fine gold. She is more precious than jewels and nothing you desire compares with her. Long life is in her right hand and in her left hand are riches and honor. Her ways are pleasant ways and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her and happy are all who hold her fast. The Lord by wisdom founded the earth by understanding he established the heavens. By his knowledge, the deeps were broken up and the skies dripped with, dripped with dew. My son, let them not vanish from your sight. Keep sound wisdom and discretion so they will be life to your soul and adornment to your neck. Then you will walk in your way securely and your foot will not stumble. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. When you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. Do not be afraid of sudden fear, nor the onslaught of the wicked when it comes. For the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being caught. Do not withhold good from those in whom it is due when it's in your power to do it. Do not say to your neighbor, go and come back 
and tomorrow I will give it when you have it with you. Do not devise harm against your neighbor while he lives securely beside you. Do not contend with a man without cause if he has done you no harm. Do not envy a man of violence and do not choose any of his ways. For the devious are an abomination to the Lord, but he is intimate with the upright. The curse of the Lord is on the house of the wicked, but he blesses the dwelling of the righteous. Though he scoffs at the scoffer, yet he gives grace to the afflicted. The wise will inherit honor, but fools display dishonor. Proverbs chapter three. So as we start diving into some nuggets in Proverbs chapter three, one of the things that I want you to just kind of look at, if you were to go back to Proverbs chapter two, if you got your Bible on you, if you don't, don't worry about it. But in Proverbs two, verse one, he says, my son, if you receive my words, Proverbs chapter three, verse one, my son, do not forget my teaching. Proverbs chapter four, verse one, hear, O sons, the instructions of a father. One of the big things about um, this nugget that I think that we can take away from the book of Proverbs is the book of Proverbs is showing us the importance of male father influence in dropping wisdom and knowledge and insights into their children. And then specifically their sons who are going to also be leaders of families, leaders of homes. And so uh, it's important to think about as men what are we passing on from generation to generation to our children? Uh, what we have done in our society today is we've put a lot of parental responsibility on mothers when those responsibilities are really designed for men. Um, they're designed for men to lead homes, lead families, lead wives, lead, ch lead children. Now, I'm not saying that women don't have the ability to lead, but I'm talking about that divine responsibility that God has given to a male to lead properly and to lead diligently, not lead in dominance, but to lead the family diligently to guide and direct. There's actually a study that came out uh, that was displayed on Good Morning America, and it talked about children actually learn language quicker through the voice of their father. If their father talks to them more, children pick up on the language that they're learning, um, that they're being raised in better if they hear it from the father. So, one of the key nuggets that we need to drop is fathers, what are we passing down? What are we passing on from generation to generation? Are we dropping wisdom and insight that our families need to instruct and to guide their lives? So Proverbs 3, 1, my son, do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments. Um, we're living in a day and age also to where some people don't even value having a father in their home while there are all these people that don't have fathers in their home. If God has blessed you to have a father inside your home, doesn't mean that you're not blessed if you don't have a father, because women can do a great job without a male. Um, and that's found in the book of Second Timothy, uh, with Timothy's grandmother and mother doing a great job. But receiving the word from a father, being able as a son, as a daughter, to listen to the voice of your dad and to receive it and to hear what they're saying, if it's wisdom. And he says, here's what wisdom does. It adds to your days. Uh, your, the days of your life will be sweet. The days of your life will become uh, more beneficial, more productive. Why? Because if you have a wise father who's already navigated through some areas of life, already had some trips, already had some fumbles, already had some successes and some wins, he can guide and direct you around the right path to show you the way to go. And so he says, it, you know, it'll, br it'll bring peace to you. He says, do not let kindness and truth leave you, bind them around your neck. So wisdom ought to change the type of person that you are. Um, he says that kindness ought to come forth from you, that if you're a person that's gaining the wisdom of God and the knowledge of God, the way you treat people, it ought to be evident that you're operating through wisdom, that you're doing things that are kind towards others and loving towards others. Uh, he said, write these things on the tablet of your heart. Um, make sure that this is how you guide your life. That I can think about things that my dad and my mom taught me when I was a child. And I'm now uh, plus 50, but I just look 30. Um, but, but, but the deal is, is I can still remember things that they taught me that I hold to right now. 
I remember my mom one time telling me this, this, this pearl of wisdom. And it was, there was a friend who had been blessed that God had blessed them with something. And I told my mom, Hey mom, this happened for them. And, um, and she said, that's great. But I'm glad to see that you're really excited about your friend being blessed and it doesn't have anything to do with you. She said, let me tell you something. If you're not genuinely or sincerely excited when God blesses one of your friends or someone that you know, then you're not in a position to be blessed. And she was saying that, that, that if you're jealous of other people's blessings from God, then you're not in a spiritual, personal, relational position with God to be blessed. That's something that I have in my heart. So when he says, take these pearls of wisdom and put them in your heart, think about those things that your dad and your mom taught you. That although they might have taught you that while you were a kid, you're holding to that thing as a core belief system right now. So that's what he's talking about. And then he says that famous verse five and six, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. So he puts, uh, he puts his sons in the position as he drops wisdom to say, I want you to know one thing that even if I'm not there, there's one thing that you can do. If, if, if I, as your father am not there, you can trust in the Lord with all your heart. Believe in God, lean on him, trust in him to teach you, to guide you, to instruct you. There's going to be a certain length of time that your dad is there, your parents are there, and then there's going to be a time of transition. I lost my father last year, February 13th. He's physically not here on earth. His pearls of wisdom are still with me. However, he taught me to trust in the Lord. And so he's saying, hey, I want you to trust in the Lord with all your heart and don't lean on your own understanding. Don't think you're smarter than you are, Blake. But in all of your ways, acknowledge the Lord and God will guide and direct your path. And um, then he says this, do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. Uh, this is a big one because he just came off of trust the Lord and lean not on your own understanding. Many of us have a high opinion of who we are. We believe, you know, we have high opinions of what we think. He says, don't trust in your own thinking. He said, but lean on the Lord and don't be wise in your own eyes. Don't think that you're smarter. Don't think that you're sharper. Don't think that, you know, he's not saying think down on yourself, but don't come in with a high and mighty view that when you come in the room, you have the best idea and no one else has one better than you. He says, D -d don't be wise in your own eyes. Don't think that you, you know it and you know everything. He says, fear the Lord and turn away from evil. Because a lot of times when we're trusting in our own ways, our own ways will guide us down the wrong path. He said, but if you're going to really fear the Lord, there are going to be some opportunities out there that you're going to see to where you could do something to get ahead personally, to get ahead individually, to get ahead selfishly. And he says, no, no, no. He said, turn away from evil. So the wisdom of God gives you the ability to make wise decisions and say, no, that's, that's not the Lord. That's not God's ways. That's, that's going to lead me down the wrong path. Let me move. Proverbs 3 through 7. He talks about it being healing to your body. And then he says in, in verse 9, honor the Lord with your wealth and from the first of all your produce. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. He talks about being able to be generous people and honoring God with the resources that God has blessed you with. Since God is our provider, he says, when it's time to honor God, honor God with your wealth, honor God in your, in your giving, um, honor God in your offering. And, but a lot of times the way we think about life is, is if I have this amount of money and I give something away, we view it as our account just went down. But what God said in the next verse is he says, when you honor the Lord with your wealth and the first of your produce, he says, then your barns will be filled. When God sees you as a cheerful giver, God is able to give back. As the Apostle Paul says, he provides seed to the sower. Um, I watched my dad by sitting next to him in church. I watched my dad write his tithe and offering check. I sat on his right side and, you know, at church. I always sat on my dad's right side. And I'd watch him write his tithe and checks and all that kind of stuff. I didn't understand what that stuff was back then. But I knew it was a, it was a sum of money <laughs> that he would write into the church. And I remember when my brother got accepted to Stanford University, um, and when my brother got accepted to Stanford University, we fi financially didn't have the funds. He didn't get a full athletic or full academic scholarship. But in running into track meet, after all these years that I watched my dad give, 
my brother w wins the 200 meter and the 400 meter dash. And there was two families. Um, I'll, I'll mention their last names. It was the Osborne family and the Gunn family. Mr. Osborne happened to have gone to Stanford, asked Brian, hey, his daughter ran on the track team. Hey, you know, wh where are you going to college? I know you're a senior. He said, I got into Stanford, but don't know if we can afford it. Mr. Osborne said, Brian, my law firm will give you this amount of money every quarter to go to school at Stanford. He then turned to another man by the name of Mr. Gunn, uh, who if you're in San Antonio and you see Gunn Nissan, Gunn Honda, that's the Gunn family. And he said, would, would you give? And Mr. Gunn matched him. And then my dad told a friend the story and his law firm matched. And all of a sudden we went from $24,000 a quarter to where we only owed six because all of them gave six. And it was uh, my dad having given cheerfully all those years. And when it was time for a reaping and sowing, God provided it through some people. And so honor the Lord with, you, with your wealth. Trust God. Give and, and watch what God will do. And then he talks about the discipline of the Lord. Uh, he says, you know, don't, don't despise God disciplining you, you as a child of God because God disciplines those that he loves. God corrects and redirects. So when you look at discipline, discipline is not punitive from God's perspective. Discipline is restorative. God disciplines to restore. In the book of Hebrews, he said he disciplines those he loves. Why? Because it's like a joint that comes out of socket. When God sees one of his children operating in, improperly, he said it's like a joint that comes out of socket. When your arm comes out of socket, it's just hanging. It can't do what it's designed to do. So God puts it back in through discipline and his love for you to get you back in the right direction and in the right path. Just a little nugget. Um, he says that wisdom, Proverbs 3.13 through about 18, he says that wisdom is better than silver or gold. He says that when you start thinking about being able to make wise decisions, it doesn't matter how much money you have. You've seen people throughout history blow money. No wisdom. Spending, spending, spending. No wisdom. But he says wisdom is better than silver or gold. A lot of people value money. A lot of people value money. He says, but wisdom, having wisdom and being able to make wise decisions in life is better than silver or gold. It's more meaningful. So when you're able to make wise decisions, then your life is directed the right way. And you begin to value wisdom and God's knowledge and direction in your life more than you do temporary money that can be fleeting and pass away. And so, um, you know, so he, he talks about wisdom that way. In verse 20, I'm diving to verse 20, y'all. He says, by his knowledge, the deeps were broken up and the skies dripped with dew. Let me go back to verse 19, actually. The Lord, by wisdom, founded the earth and by understanding, he established the heavens. So God, you to, my wife just tuned in. Hey, babe, so good to see you. Uh, um, uh, Proverbs 3, verse 19 and 20, the Lord utilized wisdom to make the earth and the world. So when God set the sun this far away, that was wisdom from the earth. So when God sets it that far away from the earth, uh, if he sets it closer, the earth burns up. If he pushes it further, the earth freezes. That God divinely orchestrated and designed the universes and made everything perfect. We're spinning around so fast right now that we think that we're standing still, but we're actually, you know, rotating around the sun. And so, um, you know, all of that's happening and God in his infinite wisdom has everything operating just perfectly. And so even God use, uses wisdom in putting things together in an excellent way. He is the ultimate example of how you put things together in an excellent way because you utilize the wisdom of God. Um, so let's dive down to, uh, to another uh, verse 23. When you get wisdom... He says in verse 23, then you will walk in your way securely and your foot will not stumble. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. When you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. Um, and you don't have to fear when calamity comes around the way. Um, verse 23, when you walk in your way, utilizing wisdom, you'll walk securely. Now, everybody, when it comes down to life, would like life to, uh, to have wise decisions to see life go the right way, that's what wisdom does. 
Um, now, that doesn't mean that you won't have challenges. That doesn't mean that you won't have trials and tribulations, but you'll know how to handle them because you have wisdom. And so wisdom, even in the face of adversity, allows you to walk securely and to allows you to handle the things of life. A difficulty comes up, uh, whether it's sickness, whether it's the loss of a job, you're not losing your mind because you've been walking with wisdom and you trust a God who's a provider, who's a healer, and you know where to go in the word of God to start your prayer life going. He says, so you can walk securely and don't have to worry about when the wicked come or evil comes your way. Um, why? Verse 26, for the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being caught. Amazing that, that, that with all this going on, people plotting and scheming uh, on you, kind of what you see in verse 24 and 25, the wicked, he says, your foot's going to be secure. Why? Because your confidence is the Lord. You're not putting your confidence in man or your fear in man. You're putting your confidence in the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Don't try to contrive your way out of a situation. Don't, when someone cheats you, you try to cheat them. Don't do that. He says, no, put your confidence in the Lord and watch God show up and watch God do what he does. Now, verse 27 through 35, we're coming to the end. Do not withhold good from those to whom it is due when it is in your power to do it. Do not say to your neighbor, go and come back and tomorrow I will give it uh, when you have it with you. God says, here's real wisdom. There are going to be people that are going to come up with real needs in your life. We're not talking about silliness. We're talking about there are going to be people that have real needs that come up. And when you have wisdom in your life and God has been providing for you, he says, when it's in your power to do it, help that person. We live in a world of suspicion. We want to be suspicious of everybody. But there are those times to where you know where something comes up and God has already provided for you. And here's somebody in need. And God is reminding you that this is an opportunity not for you to just honor the Lord with your wealth by so-called giving in church, but even honoring a neighbor that's in a bad situation by you having not spent everything on yourself, that when someone has a need, you can meet that need financially and spiritually by allowing them to know what God has done for you and that God comes through. And he says, don't, don't delay. What you do, do quickly. Do, do, do your giving and your care quickly. Don't overthink it. Don't, you know, well, I wonder if they did this or will they pay me back? If someone that you know that you love is in need, guess what? At that moment, you may not be in need. But if you never give to anybody else when they're in need, how are you going to get this, the reaping when you've never sown? When you never sow, there are a lot of people that want to reap, but they've never sown. What if somebody that you know, somebody that you love, it comes upon hard times and you have it and you're like, well, man, let me think about it. No, if you have it, God said, if it's in your ability to do it, do it. And so wisdom uh, becomes a generous giver. Um, verse 29. Do not devise harm against your neighbor while he lives securely beside you. Do not contend with a man without a cause if he has done you no harm. Do not envy a man of violence and do not choose uh, any of his ways. Uh, for the uh, the devious are an abomination to the Lord, but the, but the uh, he is intimate with the upright. God wants wise people to know there's no need for you to ever plot, plan, and scheme on anybody else. No need for you to ever plot, scheme, plan evil for anybody why? Because if God is really providing you for, for, for wisdom, guess what? God has enough to go around. God has enough for you <laughs> and God has enough for your neighbor. When God blesses your neighbor, man, be excited about it. When God blesses you, be excited about it. But you don't ever have to look at somebody else's and be envious and go try to grab it, steal it and take it. Um, I'm going too long. So let me let, let me get out of here. Um he says the devious are an abomination to the Lord, but he is intimate with the upright. You want intimacy with the Lord? Walk right. Walk right. You will sense and feel the Lord when you walk and handle people the right way. Um, and he says, uh, but he blesses the dwelling of the righteous. And I'm going to stop right there. Uh, he blesses the dwelling of the righteous. When you look at blessings, do not just look at car, house, that type of nonsense. Where you dwell and where you are, everywhere you go, God's hand of blessing and favor when you utilize wisdom in life is on you. 
So there's nothing that you need from anybody else when God's providing like that. And so I'll leave it right there. Uh, those are my, my nuggets from chapter three. Um, but I, th I think it's really solid to see um, that the curse of the Lord, verse 33, the curse of the Lord is on the house of the wicked. That when you get moved from wisdom to wickedness, he says, man, God's got a curse on that. But he says, but when you're upright, God's dwelling, God's blessing is on the dwelling of the upright. And so wisdom leads us to upright lives to where God can bless us and do whatever he wants to for us. So, hey, been too long. Any questions? Any questions? That's 1226. I think we went about 22 minutes yesterday. Uh, 1226. Any questions? Any thing that you want to dive in on? If not, I'm going to let you get back to your workplace. But make sure that you share this with family and friends. Uh, we'll be going through Proverbs chapter 4 tomorrow. and uh, But each day of January, we'll be going through one chapter. And um, uh, Don says we still have four minutes. <laughs> All right. My man, Mark Brown. Grateful to have access to these. Amen. My, my man, Mark Brown from high school. Uh, uh, so... Y'all, any, any any questions, any any nuggets, anything that you want to... Lisa J, no problem. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank y'all for turning in. Priceless nuggets. With, uh, wisdom is female. Oh, good. Great. I'm Carol, I'm glad you pointed that out. So in Proverbs chapter 3, um, I'm glad you pointed that out, Carol. In Proverbs chapter 3, and you'll actually see some, I don't, I don't want to go there yet because, because we're 28 days away from Proverbs 31. But in Proverbs chapter three, wisdom is personified as a female. Wisdom is personified as a female. And what, what God is saying is that when he gets to Proverbs 14, a wise woman builds her house, but the foolish woman tears it down. That, that, that wisdom is personified as a woman who in a very organized, administratively sound, structured way builds things, blesses things, and, you know, makes things better. When you look at back in Genesis, when the Bible talks about that Eve came along as Adam's helper back in the book of Genesis, I'm going to give you a help me. When God uses the word helper, it's the same word that God uses, Ezer, it's a Hebrew word. It's the same word that, it, that God uses for himself. And the Lord helped Israel. So when he talks about that when God gave man a wife and he called her a helper, he says that she comes alongside him and helps him accomplish what he set his goals towards. So when God helped Israel win a war or a battle, it wasn't that Israel won the battle by themselves. It was the fact that God was on their side, and because God was on their side, he helped Israel win the battle. And so a wife or a woman was personified as a helper who comes alongside, builds, blesses, constructs, and erects and architects things alongside that man for success. For success. And that's the way the, the term wisdom is personified. So Carol, thank you so much for that. So wisdom is personified as a female helper. Um, mm -hmm. Great question, Carol. Thanks a lot. Um, well, look here, y'all. It's 1229. Don, we got one minute. And uh, I hope that we uh, utilize it. Oh, thank you, Carol. God bless. When we get to, when we get to chapter 31, I'll drop a, drop a nuggets about wisdom personified as female. So I, I just don't want to jump 28 days ahead. Remember, we ain't trying to catch that extra Holy Ghost. We're just trying to catch the Holy Ghost on this thing. So, well, hey, y'all, let me say this. Uh, the book of Proverbs is that book. The book of Proverbs is that book that you want to go to and read just for basic wisdom. And it is an amazing book to use with your children to help your children navigate through life situation. You may not turn to the book of Ezekiel and Zechariah and get these pearls of wisdom. But the book of Proverbs is a father writing his sons on how to navigate through life in a wise way. It is an amazing book if you just read one chapter a day to where you begin to get insights. And that's what our series is going to be about. We're not going to go from Proverbs 1 to 31, but we're going to pick up on major themes starting this Sunday at 8.30 and 11 o'clock in our series Raw, Real Authentic Wisdom, 
listen, learn, and live. Listen to the word of God, learn the word of God, and live it out and watch God's wisdom flow in your life. So, all right, y'all, much love. It's 1230. God bless y'all and uh, love y'all and hope you and your families are enjoying uh, the book of Proverbs. I pray that, man, you just dive in on one chapter a day and just ask God. Let me pray for us. Let me pray for us before we get off the line. Father, thank you for this opportunity to get together uh, with family and friends across the nation. And, um, and God, I just pray that you would give us that desire for wisdom, that desire for insight, that we could live in a secure way and make decisions, God, that are pleasing in your sight. Lord, help us to know how to be prepared to help a brother or sister in need. And that if it's in our need, if it's in our ability, God, help us to be ready and prepared knowing that you've provided for us. God, help us to trust in you and not in ourselves so that you can direct our paths and we, don't, and we won't guide ourselves down the wrong path by being wise in our own eyes. Thank you, Lord, for this time together. We bless you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Love y'all. Man, look forward to talking to y'all tomorrow at noon.